In this video, I will show how to drive the parametric equation of this curve, which is called the cycloid. This is basically the trajectory of a fixed point on a circle, uh, and its trajectory that is traced by this point as the circle rotates along the straight line. And of course, this trajectory uh, arises uh, for every car wheel that is lying, uh, riding on a straight line, or a bicycle wheel, then if we will mark a point, then that would be its trajectory. So we'll see how to drive the equation of this curve, and we will see how it is related to one of my favorite scenes in Spider-Man. So let's go to the equations. And we'll also see, of course, how to model all of this in uh, Desmos. So let's go to the equations. So uh, what we have here is that this circle is constrained to rotate on, along the straight line. And uh, as this uh, circle has rotated, basically this arc uh, is, is uh, upwards. And this point, this, this is the point of contact. And so this arc, if this angle is S, is the change in the angle of, of this point. So basically it's this point is uh, now over here. So if this angle is S, uh, then what we have here, of course, is that uh, since uh, this angle S is measured in radians, then this distance is R times S, because this is the length of this arc, and the, because of the nature of the motion, it has to be equal to this distance. So the distance between the centers of the circles is r times s, and uh, the the length of this uh, uh, segment is, of course, r sine of theta, and uh, this uh, height, the height of this point, is going to be, so we need to take the radius of the circle r, and of course this is r, uh, yeah, so this is r cosine of s, and here we need to take r and subtract r uh, cosine of s, okay? And so uh, here the, the coordinates of this, the y coordinate of this point was derived. And for the x coordinate, of course, this the x coordinate of this point, we need to take r times s and subtract, subtract this. So uh, the equations uh, of this curve that is going to be traced by this point like that is r times s minus r the sine of s. And uh, the uh, y coordinate is r minus r cosine of s. So now let's go to Desmos and see how do we reproduce this and how do we plot this and even animate this. So let's start. So to draw a circle, we will just take a radius r here and it's going to be r cosine of t. Okay, and uh, sorry, cosine of t and uh, sine of t. Of course, oops, sorry, I uh, needed to take its r times, of course, and we are adding a slider for r. Of course, the radius is non negative, uh, but let's give it some value 10 here and uh, 0.1, doesn't really matter here, and our uh, t goes from 0 to 2 pi, so we get a full circle here. And let's pick this color of the circle to be white. Okay, so we have that. And so that's the circle, but we want the circle to, uh, to move on this. Uh, x-axis. So let's define its center, which is going to be sliding. And uh, so let's de de define C, which is going to be the center. And so we have seen uh, there that this distance between between the centers is R times S. And uh, so the, the coordinate of this center, as, uh, as this circle rotated an angle of S, uh, its radius is going, its center is going to be, its x-coordinate is going to be R times S and it has a constant y-coordinate, which is just r. So if we get back to Desmos here, then what we have here is r s, and this is going to be r. And so let us let us add a slider for s here. And OK, the slider that controls the animation, it's at least uh, I, I like it to be uh, on top. OK, and, th and then to have this circle, basically what we need to do here is just to add this point plus this center. And so we have shifted it by the center. Oh, s is not zero here. So if we uh, if we set s to be zero, right, then we got the circle. And then we see, okay, let's move it upwards. Uh, and so we see that as we change the slider of s, we already have this circle that is moving, which is, which is nice. Okay, so let's add uh, another point. So uh, we can add uh, this point, uh, let's call it p. 
of the one that we are going to be following to, and we actually derive the equations. So it's going to be r times s uh, minus r uh, times the sine of s, uh, okay, and and here we're going to have r minus r times the cosine of s, and that's our point, and let's change its color to this color that we've seen in the thumbnail. So now if we rotate it, we see that this circle is rotating, okay, which is nice. Okay. So now let us uh, draw the parametric equation. So we want uh, this curve to be plotting. So let us now, uh, maybe we could add the radius here, not uh, that important for now. So what we want to, to plot here is that we want to take this, so S is this slider parameter, so let me uh, take this uh, control C and just basically uh, copy paste it, control V, and let's call this by a name, let's give this function a name, um, we can maybe call it C like cycling as this function of time, and let's take this T, and this is T, and this is T, so T is a uh, variable here that is reserved for plotting this as the dummy variable. So now if we wish to plot the curve C of T, and we can basically plot it from 0 to uh, say uh, 3 pi, 3 uh, pi, then we will see that, uh, okay, let's take 2 pi, then this is, uh, this is the uh, trajectory, and let's uh, change the color here. So let's go here, and let's pick this color over here, and it's done. So yeah, we have it. We have this point moving on this curve, and we basically can extend this curve. Okay, but uh, we would like to animate it. We would like to have this curve being plotted as the circle is moved, is being moved, and seeing it just emerging, not in, in this way. So what we can do here uh, is just to say that t here goes from zero to s, and the value of s is changing. So now if we were to do this we see this animation, and we see how this point is moving. And now we can extend slightly the range of S, and but you see what happens when we draw it backwards. So if we try to draw it backwards, then you see that the domain is undefined here, right? So uh, there is a way to remedy this. That Desmos is uh, really uh, made in a smart way. So uh, let's take here to be the maximum, the range of T is going to be the maximum between zero and S, and uh, this domain is going to be the minimum between 0 and s. And now let's see if it works for negative s as well. Yeah, we have it. The disadvantage here, of course, is that when we when we trace it backwards, then it erases the trail. But if we want, we can just always say that we want to, to plot this c of t. And let's add here, uh, let's change those parameters, uh, let's say a, and this is B, and then we can add sliders for all of them, and we can basically just define the domain of A and B, and we can adjust it and plot it wherever we want. Okay, so now uh, that's what we have, and so if we want to see the curve, then basically we can play with the values of A and B, and we'll see this curve, and if we want to see uh, these traces it's being traced, so, oops, that's that's the radius. So it, it, it is nice this modularity that as we uh, drag this uh, slider for R, then the problem scales up. Okay, and so there we have it. There we have it. So let's take R to be this unit radius, and we see this nice animation. So let's extend the range. Uh, I don't know to uh, 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 let's take ten pi. Okay, up to ten uh, rotations and minus 10 pi. You can, I will share this Desmos in the description, of course, and you can uh, play with it and, you know, adjust the parameters to your own interest. Okay, and so, yeah, and we can also play this animation, and we see that, yeah, currently I've, uh, yeah, we can see it. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, and so let's pause here and jump to, that's basically the animation that I wanted to show, uh, let's jump to Spider-Man and see how it is all related to Spider-Man. 
thing. So uh, this is actually one of my favorite scenes where Peter Parker and Dr. Otto Octavius are discussing it. I like this scene because it shows how uh, Peter Parker is all into science and he's speaking with this top class scientist Otto Octavius and they find subjects to speak about them in common. So my, one of my favorites. Let's listen. Did Edison sleep before he turned on the light? Did Marconi sleep before he turned on the radio? Did Beethoven sleep before he wrote the fifth? Did Bernoulli sleep before he found the curves of quickest descent? Oh, Rosie, I love this boy. Yeah, so did, uh, did Bernoulli sleep before he found the curves of quickest descent? And it actually related to this cycloid. And yeah, that's that's basically the only relation to the Spider-Man, if you're disappointed, that, then this is it. But, uh, so what I wanted to say here with regards to this is that this problem due to Jan Bernoulli that was posted by him as a challenge. He found a really interesting and original solution and he posted it as a challenge to other scientists uh, to see if they could solve it, but he was actually bragging and he he was curious to see if Sir Isaac Newton could, sol could solve it and Newton also participated in, in this anonymously in this challenge and delivered the solution anonymously and then Bernoulli realized that the solution is due to Newton and he said you recognize the line by his clause. So, what is the problem of the Barkista crone, or what is the problem of the curve of the quickest descent? So suppose we have two points here, A and B, and we're interested to find a curve here, such that if we uh, have like a bead over here that can slide without a friction from A to B, right? Then what is the curve uh, such that uh, this uh, bead can slide without a friction during the fastest time? The Barkista crone in Greek means shortest time. What is the curve uh, that uh, guarantees the shortest time for a bead to slide without a friction? And as it turned out, it turns out this curve is exactly the cycloid, but the reversed, the reversed one. So it's this arc of the cycloid. So if the circle was here, and this is this uh, point that is rotating, then this is this uh, cycloid arc. So the curves of quickest descent is this family of curves. So basically for each uh, pair of points that are separated A and B, we can find uh, for suitable radius scaling it up the uh, proper segment of the Barkistochron. So curves of Cuckoo's descent, but actually it's, we can say one curve or in, in this family of curves, but okay, that's that's a family of curves. And as it turns out, if this video gets enough likes, I promise to make a video about the Barkistochron problem and with the solution that is based on calculus of variation. Actually, I'm planning on doing a uh, an entire playlist, an entire course on calculus of variation. It's a beautiful subject, uh, and I think it's a nice bridge between mathematics and physics, as, as it's just, you know, opened the, the domain of the analytical mechanics. But enough about that. So why I wanted to see why this problem is non-trivial. So if we were to take this path of the following form, like something like this, then the bead, if it would slide over here, then here it would gain a lot of velocity, but then it will get stuck here. And uh, it can also be easily seen that this straight line is suboptimal, because uh, if you give it some slight curvature here, then uh, it can, it can uh, you know, get, gain some more acceleration around such a trajectory. And so the solution with calculus of variation shows that this is the arc of the cycloid. And so if we want to plot this in Desmos, this curve, then what we can do here, we actually have everything prepared. We just want it to be reversed. So we can now take this, uh, where is this curve C of T? Let's, uh, uh, let's copy paste it, uh, control C and control V. Uh, let's call this curve, uh, oh, sorry, here, let's call this, uh, let's call it, yeah, it's uh, defined twice. Let's call this just B of T. Okay, the, for the Barkistochron. And basically what we need to do here is to reverse it, the y coordinate. So it's going to be a minus and here it's going to be plus. Okay, And if we were to uh, plot this b of t, uh, we would plot it uh, b of t, uh, say from 0 to uh, uh, to pi. Yeah, and that's the, that's the arc that we're interested in. Uh, let me just uh, maybe, uh, let's change the color here to, uh, oh, I don't know, um, let's change the color here to uh, this other color, uh, I don't know, maybe orange, 
yeah, that's the curve of Kluge's descent that they were talking about in, in the film. And actually, uh, Bernoulli found a very interesting and elegant solution with intuition from optics to the Brachistochrome problems. So do please tell me in, in, in the comments if you want me to do a, a continuation video on the subject. And now if you want to add a bead that is sliding, then basically what we can take here, we can just uh, copy paste this. So let's take, uh, oh, maybe we can, let's see if we can do B of S. Let's see if it works, B of S. Can we do it? Yeah, the label here, uh, that's the point, okay, uh, for some reason it doesn't display here, oh, because S, S is just large, let's see, yeah, we see that this bead is, okay, so now let's constrain it, let's constrain S for now uh, to be from uh, 0 uh, to, uh, uh, we'll have here, to pi, and now if we play, uh, yeah, so this animation of the circle will turn it off for a while. And now if we play this, this is actually the bead sliding off. And now that this point is interfering as well. So this is this bead sliding on the curve of Kluge's descent. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and I really hope to see you in the next one. And thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing so that uh, we will become a large community.